remembering those who served at Vimy. Henry Norwest was one of nearly 4,000 Indigenous members of the Canadian forces in France. He won five, five won the Military Cross, and Norwest was one of them. He held a key peak at Vimy Ridge and saved countless Canadian lives. Well, with more on his story, we're now joined by Marilyn Buffalo in Edmonton. She is Henry Norwest's great-granddaughter. Uh, Marilyn, thank you so much for joining us today. Uh, I want to begin with your grandfather. We, we, we said it briefly off top, but tell us more about his achievements as a Canadian soldier. First of all, um, our great-grandfather was um, a warrior. He was um, a, a saddler and very instrumental in bringing the buffalo into the north, into Canada from Montana State. So he, he was um, a rodeo uh, cowboy and a father and um, made a tremendous sacrifice on, on, you know, and gave his life to, to the freedom of all of Canada and indeed the world. Mm -hmm. How did he end up in France though? As you say, he began in rodeo and ended up going to France and making this contribution to, for right. Canada in the First World War. Well, first of all, he, he enlisted in the Mounted Regiment, which is, uh, I think, one of the last Mounted Regiments in Canada, and then re-enlisted into the 50th Battalion and went to uh, overseas after training in, uh, in Calgary. And uh, I might say that he um, left uh, three daughters and, and a son, and my grandmother was one of his daughters. And he leaves behind, a, as you say, a great legacy of family and sacrifice. Right. Uh, he uh, won the most accomplished snipers in the First World War. He, he held this ridge at Vimy Ridge. And despite all that he gave, all that he sacrificed, his story was not widely shared for years. Why do you think that is? Well, you know, in the research that we have done, it is not uncommon for our, our warriors, the, the First Nations and Métis warriors, to not get the recognition. They certainly did not get the, I think, the, um, you know, the rewards or the recognition when they came back. And I know from the stories that my grandmother told me that they were never properly compensated, and I know for a fact that she wasn't either. His story is now known, though. Uh, one, how does that make you feel as a great-granddaughter? And two, what do you hope his story will do in terms of recognition of the Indigenous contribution to the First World War? Well, you know, our men were completely, totally disciplined warriors. They were fit. Um, indeed, very, you know, this was not long after the signing of the treaty. So they felt a very strong allegiance to uh, our mother, the Queen, and, and uh, the British Empire. And so their duty was to serve, absolutely. And I think that, you know, the, the parents that, or the children that they left behind, um, most of them ended up in residential school and were raised, um, you know, this was a time of poverty in the early 1900s. There wasn't a lot of plenty in here in Canada overall. But, um, you know, the families paid a big price for that and the generations that follow. Of course, they were very proud. Um, my brother and I, Harvey, we have done extensive research. We always made sure that when my grandmother was alive that every year we would honor our ancestor with a feast, with powwow and uh, great ceremonies. And we made sure that as instructed by our grandmother, that his memory would live on forever. Well, that brings me to the last point here, because here we are, the 100th anniversary of Vimy Ridge, and, and there is a concern that after this anniversary, the story of Vimy Ridge, the, the story, the contributions made by soldiers, Indigenous soldiers, such as your right. great-grandfather, will be forgotten. What, what is your thoughts on the importance of remembering Vimy from an Indigenous point of view? Well, this is an era of truth and reconciliation, and I think that all of Canada should know that you know, the Indigenous peoples and families uh, made such a tremendous contribution. By the thousands, they volunteered in the First War and the Second War, and in the Korean War also. My father contributed to that. I, I also, you know, need to know, I mean, the First Nations 
uh, educators need to take more of an active interest, I think, in making sure that we instill all of our heroes' their stories and their memory in the curriculum and in all of the books that need to be written so that all of Canada will benefit from these stories, not just our kids, but all of Canadian children will learn from it. And also I wanted to share that our family will be going overseas next year because next year in August 18, 1918 is when my great grandfather passed away in battle. So our goal is to raise money and do a film documentary that can be used by all of Canada's schools and our young people and of five generations that are alive uh, will go overseas and do a proper traditional feast and ceremony and bring our drums and bring our traditional foods and we invite the royal um, you know army the military the Department of Veteran Affairs and uh, the Prime Minister of Canada to support our proposal that we are right now putting together. Well, Marilyn, we wish you well in that, and I'm thank so very you. honoured that you shared your story with us. Thank you. Thank you very much, and I thank CBC for doing such a wonderful job for us and our family. Thank you, thank Marilyn. You.